A particle P moves along a straight line. The speed of P at time t seconds, where t is positive, is given by V, where V is equal to this. And then we're told that P, Q, and R are constants. We're told that when t is equal to 2, the speed has its minimum value. And when t is 0, V is 11. When t is 2, V is 3. And then we're trying to work out what the acceleration is. All right, so we have an expression for velocity. V is equal to pt squared plus qt plus r. We want to work out acceleration. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity or the differential of velocity with respect to time. This is equal to, if we differentiated this, we'd end up with 2pt plus q. So then to work out what acceleration is, we need to end up with what p is and what q is. So that's now when we're going to be using all of the information that we're given in the question. So let's just start from the beginning. We're told that when t is equal to 2, the speed of p has its minimum value. OK, so when t is 2, the speed is a minimum value. So if v represents speed rather than velocity, then that means that if we had a graph of speed against time, it will never dip below the x-axis. It will never be negative. So then we know from that our speed time graph will look something like, well, either like this or it would look something like this. One of the two things. And we're told that when t is equal to 2, the speed is a minimum value. Well, from the graph that we have on the left-hand side, the minimum value of speed occurs here. So remember that we can't have negative times, so we're only going to be considering this part of the graph. The minimum speed will therefore occur at time t is equal to 0, which is not what we have. We have the minimum speed occurs when t is equal to 2. That would correspond to the graph that we have here. The speed is a minimum at this point here, so then this would be when t is equal to 2, and the speed at that point would be 3. Okay, so acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. If we know that the speed is a minimum at t is equal to 2 seconds, and from our graph we know that this corresponds to a turning point, then that means when t is equal to 2, the differential of velocity with respect to time, or the acceleration, will be equal to 0. So dv dt when t is equal to 2 would be, so putting t is equal to 2 into what we have here, we will end up with 4p plus q, and we know that this must be equal to 0. The acceleration at that point is 0. The gradient of this graph at that point, at time t is equal to 2, is 0. So that's our first equation. That can help us work out what p and q are. 4p plus q is equal to 0. I'll call that equation 1. OK, so what else can we use? We have that when t is equal to 0, v is equal to 11. So let's use that now. t is 0, v is 11. Putting that into the equation that we have here. So when t is equal to 0, this term is 0, this term is 0. So then v will just equal to r. v is 11, so r is equal to 11. And then we can now use this information here, when t is 2, v is 3. Put it into the same equation. So v is 3, t is 2. So again, putting t is 2 into these two things here, we get 4p plus 2q plus r, but we know r is now 11. So this equation then becomes 4p plus 2q is equal to minus 8. And let's call that equation 2. Putting equation 1 just beneath that so we can solve the two things simultaneously. And then we can take the two things away. So subtract. And then we end up with this is minus 8. This will be q. This is 0. So q is equal to minus 8. OK, we've got that now. q is minus 8. We need to work out what p is as well. Looking at equation 1, then we can see that p is equal to, so rearranging equation 1, we end up with p is equal to minus q over 4, which is the same thing as p is equal to minus minus 8 over 4, or 2. 
So then we have p is 2. q is minus 8, p is 2. Let's put those two things into our acceleration equation now. So acceleration was what we have up here, 2pt plus q. Acceleration is 2pt plus q, which is the same thing as, so 2pt now becomes 40 and the q becomes minus 8. So there's our acceleration, and we wanted to work out acceleration when t is 3. So now we can put in t is equal to 3 into this. 4 times 3 minus 8, 12 minus 8, which is 4. And then for part b, we want to work out the distance traveled by p in the third second of motion. Okay, so the phrasing for this question is what I'd imagine would throw a few people off. So in the third second of motion. So what exactly does that mean? We'll get back to that in a second. Let's think about how we can work out distance first of all. We have a velocity equation now. So first of all, we knew that v was equal to pt squared plus qt plus r. So we know that our velocity will then be, if I write that over here somewhere, velocity will then be, so p was 2, we worked out p to be 2, and we worked out q to be minus 8, and we worked out r to be 11. So then our velocity is equal to pt squared, which is 2t squared, plus qt, which is minus 8t, plus r, which is plus 11. Now we need that because to work out distance, we have to integrate velocity with respect to time. So now we have what our velocity is. Okay, so now let's think about what it means when it says in the third second of motion. So if I were to Let's say t is either 0 or 1 or 2 or 3. Okay, so if these are the times, then this interval from here to here represents the first second of motion. This interval here represents the second second of motion, and this interval here represents the third second of motion. So then, if we want to work out the distance traveled in the third second of motion, then we're going to be looking at the interval from 2 to 3 seconds. In other words, we're going to be integrating speed between 2 and 3 seconds. So we know what speed is. That's what we have in blue at the top. So then we're integrating from 2 to 3, 2t squared minus 8t plus 11. So integrating this becomes 2t cubed over 3, minus 4t squared plus 11t. Limits are 2 and 3. Now when we put in 3 into what we have here, we end up with 15. And when we put in 2, we get 34 over 3. Take the two things away, and we get 11 over 3, which is then our final answer. Now I'm assuming the units are meters, but let's just check to make sure. So going up, yeah, we're told that speed is in meters per second. So then, and t is in seconds as well. So yes, the units for acceleration are correct and the units for distance are also correct.